Hello everyone, welcome back to Kelvin Valley Farming Simulator 15. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, and what did I press that button for? Thanks for stopping by for yet another episode on this wonderful map. I've been in the process of running the roller over the plowed soil. I rented it and it appears I have just under two hours left and one purpose of this roller is to smooth out what was plowed and it's actually putting down the oh look at that there's my little sheep <laughs> it follows you wherever it goes But one purpose of this is it's putting down the cultivated texture, but really all I'm doing is smashing the little rocks um, into the soil, kind of like this one on this other head. Maybe I'll hit it here. We'll be on the pass coming up. Lift up the roller. Because every rock we can smash into the soil is one less that we have to actually pick up. Although picking up the rocks isn't hard, I think I've described a script that I have fixed to a trailer where it'll automatically pick it up for us. Well, I don't have any fancy stories to tell tonight. Not that the stories I told last time were fancy. Um, makes me wonder how many of the stories my father told that I could recall to tell in here. <laughs> but they're kind of little kid stories, so I don't know if those are of interest or not. I, I really enjoy looking back on them. But I realize enjoyment is maybe specific to the family. There we go, another rock is down. We are circling this here bit of rock. I should wish the fog would just go away. Yeah, we still have another 38 minutes before it clears off. I know, I don't need to complain. It's probably not uh, very becoming. I suppose I could just fast forward, but I don't want to... I may have to lease this uh, roller. Come on, put it on that. For a little bit longer. I don't know if an hour and 39 minutes is going to be sufficient to get the rest of this or, or not. I guess I'll find out. Sad rock big enough I'm trying to get underneath it. Yeah. I don't think I was able to smash that one. Most of you can tell you can smash them because they're just flat out small. Some of them are so small, you can kind of barely make them out. Kind of skip around this guy. Here's a big one over here. Got to skip by him. Ah, I was going to mod this roller so it was a little lighter to pull. And I kind of forgot to do that before coming in game. But that's alright. But I guess something that came to mind tonight, you know, even as I see that little sheep over there, our trusty sheep, which is a mod, by the way, um, I got it on Marhu's site, I think maybe I've described that before, I kind of think his site is down, too, by the way, or maybe taken off here permanently, you know, he was a modder, I don't know when he started, the latest work that he did, I think was for Armsim 17, and and I think he must have lost interest in the game, perhaps, or yeah, who knows. Sometimes uh, modders come and go. The one that uh, mentored me in my first script, his intro, I think he made uh, stuff through 17. I don't know if he did any for 19. Um, his side is still out there, but I don't... Uh, I don't think he's active anymore. Maybe he's modding for another game now. Wish he was still active on Farming Sim, but that's the way it is. But back to the animals. 
you know, thinking of our trusty sheep, um, I got to thinking, and I know this is probably common to a lot of folks, uh, what kind of pets have you had around your home? And, you know, I, I think I've described my family before, wife and married, we just had our anniversary. Uh, we got married in 96, so that's getting a, to be a few years ago now. And two of our daughters, we had four children, they've left home in school, in the workforce, we get that rock out of the way, uh, two boys still at home, but over the years we've had a number of pets as a family uh, for our four kids, quite a variety, I think, now, um, beyond the typical cat or just a dog, and you know, we've had those too, um, it's hard to know even what order to do them in. And it's so funny, everybody has their preference, you know. And I I think, as far as pets, I don't think there's anything that would ever trump a dog. Um, <laughs> dogs are just, they're just amazing creatures. And I, mean, I think I saw a phrase one time about trying to live up to be the kind of person that your dog thinks you are. Only the dog, of course, doesn't know better. They're just intensely loyal animals. Uh, you know, it's no wonder they're referred to as man's best friend. Uh, but maybe uh, cats are just so aloof. You know, if there's any of them that I haven't deferred, it's probably been cats. They're just... Uh, it's like they come around when they want something, and that's the only time they come around, and the rest of the time they could care less about you. Uh, you know, not very affectionate as a general rule, but uh, <laughs> I have a feeling what I'm saying right here is going to be anathema to Reefy1952. I think he has a cat uh, built into his uh, YouTube logo. I'm sure, I mean, there's probably some cats that are more affectionate than others, but my observation is, is they're affectionate while they're kittens, and that's about it. The rest of the time, they march to the beat of their own drummer, and, you know, <laughs> they would sell you if they could, if there was some advantage in it. So, in terms of cats, I know when we bought our home here, where we live in the country, it came with a cat. It was kind of a scruffy, grayish, black cat. And, and by the way, all of our animals have been outside animals. I guess I would say we haven't kept any pets in the house. Uh, part of it is uh, my own personal allergies. There's a few exceptions we've made periodically to have an animal in the house, but it's really only been an exception. I just don't think my allergies would take it, particularly with cats. So. The cat that came with the place, uh, his name was Gus. He was kind of scruffy. Uh, the only reason he came with the place was because the former owner couldn't catch him. So, I mean, that's a cat for you, right? Aloof didn't even want to go with the former owner. He basically, I think, saw this house as his house. And he wasn't going to leave, you know, let the human leave. But he wasn't going to leave. So he was around for a number of years, and I don't remember what happened to him. I don't remember if he just disappeared one day. I think he was neutered and everything, so, you know, if a cat isn't neutered, a male cat, you know, is going to attract other tomcats in the neighborhood. I remember seeing some of those as a kid. It was always, a, I remember kind of being scared a little bit by it. It sounded just very strange to hear the, you know, the cats wind up with their, oh, whatever you call it, their growls. It's still kind of high-pitched, but, you know, once they got into fighting, I mean, they meant business in every sense of the word. So we had Gus for I don't know how long at, uh, whoop, where am I headed to? Reaching for my glasses here to look at my paper. Um, we had a nether cat by the name of Mittens, uh, and I don't remember where Mittens came from or where Mittens went. 
he was here for a little while. Ooh, we picked up a little oh, okay. Maybe we'll smash this one. Uh, probably not. See if we can pull the hill for these rocks. At least one of them is rolling. The other one's trying to work its way underneath and through the roller. Maybe I just tapped it up a little bit. Nope. I'll lift it as soon as I get to the end and see if it will pass over these. Mittens, probably not a very creative name, but, you know, who hasn't heard the story of Mother Kitten and her little kittens who lost their mittens and... Anyway, naughty kittens, right? So, we had mittens in there, and then, oops, what is this doing? Can't stay on the hill. You know, I've noticed this before in game. Sometimes I've noticed it particularly with a plow, and that's one reason I avoid using a regular mold board plow. If it would track nice and true behind the tractor, I think I would use one more often or be more tempted to use it. But sometimes, based on how the ground is shaped or whatever it is, particularly in this older version of, of Farming Sim, it uh, it would flop around like a pendulum sometimes behind the tractor and it just you know, it didn't look realistic and you know, it appears sometimes even our roller will do it. There we go. On to the next. Oh, I'm still down. No wonder it's taking its time. We had a couple other kittens over the years. I don't remember their names. Uh, they belong to my daughters. Um, two of them, I think, the garbage truck met up with them and greased them both under a tire. Um, <laughs> my girls were not happy about that, as I recall, but wasn't much we could do about it. And then there was another couple kittens we had, too, and we had dogs at that time, or a dog, and I think the puppy kind of roughed it up a little bit. I just remember one time my daughter's coming, tearing into the house, bawling, crying, upset, worried that the dog was killing their cat, and maybe he was trying to. I don't know. I don't remember their names, um, but the last one that we had that I recall was a little black cat. You know, the stereotypical black cat. He was just the cutest little kitten that we had. So playful and affectionate. One of the most affectionate cats, you know, I've ever been around. Um, at least when he was a little tyke. I think he was a male, and we didn't get him neutered soon enough, so he didn't make it. I have a feeling a Tom was in the neighborhood or something and came around and, and took care of him and killed him. But he was just the cutest little thing and playful. Um, I remember one time when we first got him, oh, that does not want to go up the slope, does it? Let me see if I can back up and cover that. Uh, hmm. take a look. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I shouldn't even be planting up that slope. I wonder if there's a way to clean that up with... Maybe there's a way to clean that up. Oh, why doesn't my health menu show up? It always seems to turn off. I don't know why. Maybe there's a way to plant grass on that slope so I don't keep trying to roll up there. It's kind of hard to see, you know, looking at it from this angle that it's not exactly flat. I think when I came in here with a chisel plow and climbed the hill on further than I intended. Oh yeah, it's going to go okay while I roll downhill. As soon as I try to roll uphill, it's going to give me the left forward. Yeah, I don't like it. It's almost like there's this crust on the edge that it isn't able to break through or something. Oh, nail the rock. I got another one up there to get. Let's see if we can climb the hill. This is pretty steep in here. 
Well, we can look at it at. Yes, and we may be a little bit blind in this hill. But this last kitten, Black Cat, I think my daughter nicknamed him Bagheera. Uh, isn't there some Disney movie that had a cat named Bagheera? I think there was. I'm not sure which one, so I think that's where she got the name. And a lot of these pets, by the way, my second daughter uh, just has adored animals ever since she was a little tyke. And she has chosen in her working career to become a vet tech. So she and her husband lived in a distance to eight, and she's continuing her schooling um, to become a vet tech, and I think she has another year left. Um, so a lot of these animals were the result of her influence, as the reason we even had them around. <clears throat> so the hero was her kitten. But, like I say, at some point he kind of disappeared, and I think another Tom must have got him or killed him or something. Which is too bad. He was a he was a good cat. Kept uh, yeah right from the get go when we had him, it was just so fun to watch him. I mean he was just a teeny kitten, and there was a I think I almost think it was a baby mouse, and it's just instinct you know with with those cats. He took right to it. He played with the thing, chucked it all over, you know had it in its mouth, spit it out, and he just. It's like he wanted something to play with, and he he made the fun last as long as he possibly could. Poor little mouse. <laughs> Just a baby mouse, too, by the way. But uh, that's kind of the sum total of the cats. Um, on the dog front, I think we've only had... I say only. We've had three cats, or, or dogs. First, I had a cousin... Is so I don't know how many years ago she was marrying a man from the Midwest part of the country and was going to move and she had a, a puppy a, a chocolate lab and she didn't feel she could take him with her so she gave him to us and his name was Tucker and he was the family dog kind of a mainstay for oh goodness it might have been 10 years or more you know, when we first got him, he was just barely out of the puppy stage. I don't think he was even a year old. So he was very rambunctious, jumping all over, getting in the flower beds and and whatnot. And he, since he had some lab in him, I mean, he would fetch stuff for you um, almost incessantly. And, and it's just curious. I mean, the labs, I've always liked labs. I think my favorite dog is a black lab. Um, don't know why. They're just, just my favorite. But I just love the attitude of the labs. They're, they're not tiny dogs. They're a little bit bigger, but they're just lovable. They're dopey. And they just do fun stuff. And he was no disappointment in that. Oh, and I forgot about another dog. I guess we've had four. Somewhere in there, my daughter... The one who's becoming a vet tech, she got a dog from another friend that I think was causing trouble at their home. He was, I have to ask her, I don't think she was a black lab, but, or, or he rather, but I think he was close. So for a while we had both Tucker and Wade, that was the name of this other dog, and I think he also would fetch stuff, but his problem was... He kept running away from home. Actually, both of the knotheads ran away from home. You know, we had those uh, shock collars on them, you know, where we had a, a buried fence or an electronic fence to try to keep them home and what have you. But, you know, I, I hate putting dogs on on uh, chains or whatever to a post, you know, where their area is so limited. So I wanted to give them more area that they could roam around the place. Uh, but of course we wanted to try to keep him here. We didn't want him to just run off. Well, whenever the batteries would run down on their shock collar, they would uh, head off and go experience things. I remember we got a call one time, middle of the night, uh, midnight, and got me out of bed. The Tucker had ran off, and I was so mad. I was fuming. <laughs> I had to call my dad, because we didn't really have the means to carry him. Borrow my dad's truck, I got him up. Um, went over, got his truck, hit it down. And I wasn't very gentle about how I hauled Tucker into the uh, back of the pickup bed. 
got him home. Um, yeah, so he, he caused us a few problems that way. But Wade... Wade, I don't know if he was smarter, dumber, or just what the deal was, but when he ran away, and he was coal black, I mean, just black as black, so at night, when he ran away one time, he, um, unfortunately, he was on the road, and I don't think the car could see him, and they just nailed him somewhere. He was probably about a mile from our house, so I just remember that was really sad. It's always had to lose a pet. It's like they almost become part of the family. And I remember that was pretty hard on my my daughter. And so we, uh, actually for both him and Tucker, we have a gravestone kind of at our place where we dug a hole and buried them. They're buried real close together. And there's a marker um, where we have the grave, if you will. So... But, yeah, kind of just a funny dog, Wade. Um, I remember one time my son was out in the front yard. He was casting his fishing pole just in the grass, practicing or whatever. And he had a full-on set of lures and hooks and weights and whatnot on his pole. And, well, the silly dog was chasing it. You know, as he cast it out, Wade would zip out after it and try to catch it. And, and well, one time he just went out and... The timing was just perfect, and I um, clobbered him on the ear with it, and it stuck tight. Well, and Wade, you know, obviously probably feels the pain in his ear, so he tries to run off, and the hook just gets set, you know, in his ear. Needless to say, my daughter was not very happy with her brother. Uh, I think she was out on a date at the time, and was over an hour's drive away. And I think we called her and told her what happened, and... Um, she and her boyfriend and some of the friends they'd gone out with came back to the house and we took care of the problem. <laughs> Poor dog. It's like, what do you do, you know, when an animal's hurting, they don't understand why they're hurting, and when you try to help them, it's going to hurt a little bit more. And, of course, they don't like that, so you got to hold them down and they don't understand. And Anyway, they took a pliers um, to get it out. Uh, it was a barbed hook too, so anyway, some of the things you shouldn't do with a fishing pole in the front yard on the floor. So that was Wade. Tucker had his own issues. He lasted longer, and in the early years, like I say, he was really rambunctious. He ran all over, was a lot of fun to be around. Um, he had kind of this habit too. You could squirt water, and he was, it's like he was curious about the water, so he would um, try to jump up and bite the water stream. But then, of course, it would squirt him full on in the face, and that would scare him, so he would hide a little bit. But there's only one other dog I remember that would do that, and that dog had some lab in him, too. He was up on the farm that I worked on, Bono. That dog was just crazy with the water hose, trying to bite the water as it came out, uh, so much so that he gets sick and he puke water, but he kept coming back for more. So Tucker was kind of that way too, uh, that we had at home. Just loved the water. But uh, he also, I mean, it's sometimes it'd be funny. They just had these funny proclivities about him. Both he and Wade would do this. You know, I'd be out working in the uh, garden you know, rototilling it with kind of a hand rototiller. And and there was something about the machine that they just, they didn't like. And they would just sit there and incessantly bark at it while I was out there trying to work. And at first it's kind of funny, but after a while it just gets annoying. It's like, come on guys, this isn't hurting anybody. Oops, how did I get out of the tractor? But uh, they couldn't just let it go. Um... My dad has a go-kart, occasionally my boys would borrow the thing and we'd bring it out and run that around. And they didn't like the go-kart either. I mean, when we come down to our house with it and turn around in our driveway, just bark, bark, bark at it um, to the point where you had to be really careful around it because, I mean, they would get very aggressive. Not threateningly or, or to bite, but it's just like they wanted to just bark the stuffing out of whatever this four-wheeled thing was that was coming into their territory that, you know, wasn't very big, so maybe they didn't feel very threatened, but 
you had to be careful because man if you ran over a paw or something you could hurt them in uh, you know in a go-kart or whatever um, so um, and then, then in later years, the poor guy kind of got arthritis, I think, in his hips. I've heard sometimes that can happen to the larger dogs, and it happened to him. Um, and it, it was it was kind of pathetic to see him run around, and you could tell he was in pain. We gave him medication for it, um, you know, that our daughter helped us with to try to keep him from experiencing too much pain. But you, it, it just... Yeah, it was, and eventually we had to put him down because it, it just, we didn't want him to be in pain. And he would try to keep up with the go-kart kind of like he had when he was younger, and it just was pathetic. <laughs> he would just lope along and limp, and he couldn't hardly do it. I mean, the, the go-kart would go zooming by the house, and so old Tucker would take off after it, and it just looked painful. It hurt just watching him run. And about by the time you get to the other side of the property, the go-kart would be zooming back to the other side, and he'd turn right around and try to keep up. And the poor fella, he just couldn't do it. And part of it might have been exacerbated by uh, you know, my wife was heading to work one evening, afternoon, evening. I came home. I was home with the kids while she headed off. She's and my wife's a nurse part time, and so she was going to the nursing home where she worked to, you know, do her shift. And so, on the way out the door, you know, and every time the, a car would come down, right, that's another thing. A tucker would go bark at it, get real close to the tires, and I know some dogs are tire nippers. I don't think he ever nipped a tire, but he'd get his head right down there like a bozo, and would be just super close to the car. And if the driver would, you know, shift one way or the other suddenly, well, I mean, it's bound to get him. So, anyway, my wife was headed out and kind of heading up the hill, and he was doing the same thing to her on the way out the door. There's just something about, oh, I gotta, what's going on here? Come on, roller. Well, this roller doesn't want to go up the hill, does it? <laughs> Maybe if you keep part of the roller over the edge, it'll do it. But my wife, I mean, somehow ran over the poor thing. And and this was a small four, uh, you know, small sedan for a car. I mean, we're talking clearance underneath it, probably, I don't know, what, six to eight inches, something like that. Not very far off the ground. It's certainly not enough room for a chocolate lab. So the poor guy got underneath there. And she calls me on her cell phone. We've kind of teased her about it to this day. Um, she calls me on the cell phone because she, she was running late for work and said, I hit the dog. I think he's hurting. You better go out and take a look. So whole family goes out and, uh, like I say, all uh, two girls and uh, two boys go out there and look at poor Tucker. And, you know, he bounced back off the road from under the car. And his uh, front, I don't know what the term is. Oops. I am having a struggle getting up this hill. I wonder if this is... Yeah, that's kind of a dirt firm that's going to bend me into the um, So we go out the air and his front paw, I think it was his right front part of his leg, basically like on a human, it'd be your forearm. Well, we know how the forearm is supposed to look. Now picture your forearm going 90 degrees to the side. Uh, not forward and back like would be normal, but to the side. I mean, it totally popped it out of joint. Um, I don't know that it broke anything, but I think when he was pulled under the car, you know, he got this huge raspberry under his legs because he was scraped on the asphalt. You know, it just makes me cringe thinking about it. And um, his leg was or, uh, was out of joint. And so <laughs> we had to haul him to the vet. And, of course, trying to get him into the carrier so we could haul him in the car was a real chore. You know, and I don't know. It's hard to tell maybe sometimes when an animal's in pain. It's not like they can talk to you and tell you. He had to be in an enormous amount of pain. 
but uh, but we eventually got him jammed into the carrier so we could take him. And I'll tell you what, after that, we could hardly ever again get him to go inside that carrier. I think it, it took so much to get him in there, and he probably was in pain with his leg at funny angles and whatnot. You know, he just didn't want to go in there. You know, took him down there. I think they x-rayed him. They got his leg back in joint. Um, probably sent us home with some medication and some cream. I think it took several weeks of putting cream on his tummy, you know, where he had been rubbed on the pavement. Um, and even over on the pavement, I mean, this is, sounds just kind of bad, but it literally rubbed fur off of him. You could see a brown stripe on the pavement where he was scraped under the car, the poor fella. And so he just had a time of it. And it seems like there was something else. My word, I can't even hardly stand the hill here. Come on. Okay, let me back up and see if I can get this. There was one other thing that he had, and I don't remember what it was, but I remember he had to have what we called this bucket on his head. It was one of those cone things, you know, where they could look out, but it was to prevent him from licking on the wound or whatever that they had. Um, so, maybe it was the same thing, maybe not, I don't remember. But, so we were put through the ringer with good old Tuck a few times, but he was a faithful dog, and, you know, there just got to a point where we had to, had to have him put to sleep, and I think he was just in a lot of pain, and there wasn't much more that we could do about it, um, you know, other than giving him medicine, which we, which we tried, but he was just getting more and more lethargic, uh, wouldn't move as much, and... And like I say, we, I asked a friend of mine to do it, uh, you know, and this is where it's hard, you know, with an animal and a family. I remember, um, I think it was my youngest son and I, we stayed home, the rest of the family kind of left, they didn't want to be there, uh, we didn't want to be there either, but my youngest son spent some time with Tucker, basically to say goodbye, and he was just kind of sitting up there by the tree, and I told my friend about when we would, you know, be leaving, and I took my son to supper, we went out to eat, and while we were gone, a friend came and took care of our, our dog, and even, uh, uh, even went to the trouble of burying him for us, which I thought was a nice gesture, but, uh, I guess these are things you do for a faithful animal that's been kind of like your, your family. So, boy, I'm not doing very good quickly getting through uh, the pets and everything, so I might have to talk about this in another episode. I see them already over half an hour, so hopefully this isn't boring anybody. I'd be curious what uh, faithful pets you've had over the years and how long you had them with you, uh, what kind of animal they are, what they, their names were. I'm always interested to learn uh, what, uh, what other people have, have had or what they've done, so... I'm going to call the episode here. Thank you all for stopping by and watching another episode on Elven Valley. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye for now.